Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to include five slow cooker recipes that I think you'll really enjoy. So if you want to see more then keep watching. So hello, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all really well today. Now, slow cookers, I think most of us are fans and if you haven't got one yet, then hopefully this video will inspire you to pick one up because they're great anyway if you're out and about and you've got a busy lifestyle, but they're also really good because sometimes they cook things really nicely or they're just handy, especially with kids. So I've got five different recipes to share with you today and I really hope that you enjoy them. So I'm gonna get started with recipe number one, which is a slow cooker pizza which now said that out loud I remember when I first discovered this it sounds crazy it sounds like it wouldn't work at all but you actually get the most delicious sort of Chicago town pizza pie-esque pizza and it's really simple what I like to do with this is put it on while I'm doing the school run and then a couple of hours later when it gets to about five o'clock when we eat together as a family then it's ready and it's done and I just prep some salad on the side you can chuck a few chips in the oven but it's really tasty it's super cheesy and the dough's really fluffy and it's a lovely one to make it'd be fantastic just to stick on if you were having a buffet or a party or something in the run-up to Christmas as well but I'm going to stop rambling and share this recipe with you first so for this first recipe we're going to be making slow cooker pepperoni pizza and for this you're going to need some pizza dough so this is the one that we had in already this is by the northern pizza dough company but Tesco do them most supermarkets do they're ready made dough and you just need soft pliable dough that hasn't been cooked yet you're going to need some fry light or you know spray oil just to spray the bottom of your slow cooker which is what I've already done you're going to need some mozzarella and then you're also going to need whatever toppings you want so we've got some pepperoni and then what I'm going to do now quickly is just make a nice tasty pizza sauce so in a little pan here I've added some garlic paste just a teaspoonful and to that I'm going to add a little passata so about two thirds of this carton here and then to that I'm going to add a teaspoon of sugar just to take away the acidity of the tomatoes and I'm going to season it with a little bit of salt and some cracked black pepper as well and we're just cooking this off just so it can thicken slightly and it's not too runny and then we will start assembling our pizza so this you can make the day before or at the weekend and just store it in the fridge it doesn't need to be hot to make this pizza um, I'm just doing it now because I've got the time then what I can do is I'll pop this in the slow cooker and then I can just enjoy spending time with the kids I don't need to keep an eye on the oven or anything like that and it will cook away nicely and be nice and fluffy and moist and cheesy which is what we want so all you want to do is get your dough and basically squish it into the bottom of your slow cooker so it's going to be like a deep pizza pie rather than like a thin and crispy one very Chicago town style pizza if you know what I mean but then once that's them you are going to go in next with your sauce and as you can see I've pushed it up at the sides here just to create a bit of a crust to hold everything together so we're going to go on with our pizza sauce our cheese and then our pepperoni and then we'll get it cooking so that's the sauce done and now I'm going in with my mozzarella I like to use grated mozzarella because I find a lot of the time it just cooks a little bit more evenly for that kind of stringy cheese pizza but you could use normal mozzarella or whatever cheese you've got in really so I'm going to pour that in and then spread it all out evenly. So that's the pepperoni topping on and then all you need to do is stick it on low for a couple of hours and then it will be ready to eat. So this is the pizza after a couple of hours and now I just need to cut it up and serve it. So this is what the finished pizza looks like and oh my goodness it's so good you really do have to try this one. So the next recipe that I've got for you are some slow cooker fajitas and fajitas typically are quite a speedy dish but sometimes it's just nice to come home after a long day and have everything ready for you to go and this is what happened with us the other week because we actually went to the Manchester Christmas markets and I stuck some slow cooker fajitas in the slow cooker and they were good to go when we got home and it was really nice just to come home and think right all I've got to do now is just prep a few sides and grate some cheese it was really simple and they were really juicy and moist the chicken was so tasty and so tender because it had been cooked in the spices for quite a long time and it's really simple to do another one that would be great if you're having guest rounds can you leave it in the slow cooker and they can just help themselves from there if you're doing like a party again and really simple I think you'll like this one so first I'm going to add a tin of chopped tomatoes to the slow cooker 
because this keeps everything nice and moist but because chopped tomatoes can be quite acidic I'm adding a teaspoonful of honey you could use sweetener here as well then I'm adding a big heat teaspoon of crushed garlic and then I'm gonna stir to combine on top of that I've added a chopped red onion and then half of my chopped peppers I use three and then I'm going in with my favorite fajita seasoning you could use your own whatever is up to you then you just pop the lid on and cook on high for three hours or low for six and this is what it looked like after we'd been out for the day so I take the chicken out and I shred it with two forks just because I find it quicker but you could slice it if you like then I add that back in to the sauce and then what I do is also add in the leftover peppers because then they cook slightly but they still have a bit of texture and crunch which I really like and then while they're warming through I cook all of the extras and sides and plate it all up so all I added to the fajitas when they were finished was a good squeeze of lime but we've got salsa cheese sour cream and homemade guacamole as well and then I can really recommend just sticking your tortilla wraps in a dry frying pan it makes such a difference if you're eating this with kids as well you can also mix in some cream cheese to the fajita mix to lessen the spice a bit so the next recipe that I want to share with you is a slow cooker pulled chicken pasta and this is just uh, the comfort food of gods really the chicken again is really moist I love doing chicken in the slow cooker because I just feel like the way it cooks is beautiful it's really easy to do and minimal washing up as well because everything's contained in the slow cooker and you just have to cook a bit of pasta on the side you can do garlic bread with it as well you could do some salad if you wanted to but I just find that a nice warm bowl of this on an evening after work or you know when the kids are in bed and it's just you two it is perfect so without any further ado here it is so to start with this one I added in a carton of passata you could even use the flavored ones as well if you wanted to and then I'm adding a small chopped red onion a big heat teaspoon of garlic paste and then a tablespoon of dried oregano and then I'm also going to add about a tablespoon of balsamic vinegar a good heat teaspoon of sugar and then I'm going to stir all of that through and you're going to pop your chicken breast in with a little bit of salt and pepper and then cook on high for three hours or low for six hours and once that's done your chicken's going to look like this so once again I'm going to shred my chicken just because I find it easier but you could chop it up it's entirely up to you and then I'm just going to go and taste the sauce so I still felt like this needed a bit of sugar to lessen the acidity and then I also went in with an entire tub of cream cheese and this is where it gets really really comfort foodie. I'm going to put the chicken back in, season with a bit of salt and pepper as needed and then give it all a big stir through and then meanwhile I've grated some parmesan which is going to go in and also finely sliced some basil. I've also kept some of those at the end to garnish with as well and then once that's all mixed through I've added some cooked pasta here and then you can stir it all in the slow cooker which is really nice because it just saves on washing up and then once that's done you're going to place it up you can see it with garlic bread if you fancy it and then that extra basil and parmesan and this was really really comforting and perfect for this time of year now the next recipe is also a great one if you're having guests around especially at this time of year and it's slow cooker sticky chicken drumsticks and the marinade for these oh it's just lovely and it really really soaks into the chicken as it cooks and it's really really simple to do the nice thing is is that it also leaves your oven free if you're having loads of guests around you've got more room in your oven to do other things and all I do is quickly grill them at the end to just add a bit of char and sprinkle over some sesame seeds but they're really lovely and I love making this recipe for my family. So for these chicken wings we're going to start with the marinade so the nice tasty sauce that they're going to be cooked in and what you're going to start with are some measuring cups. Now if you don't already have these I cannot recommend getting them enough because they are so handy for various different recipes and this that I just have from Amazon they all clip together in a ring and they're just really useful so I'm going to get my quarter of a cup here and I'm going to go in with some soy sauce first. I'm just using light soy sauce here but any is fine. Then next up you're going to add a quarter of a cup of balsamic vinegar so that's going in next. These are all things that I generally have in anyway and they're really really useful like covered items to jazz up your meals. So that's those two. Then I'm going to go in with about a tablespoon of sesame oil just for flavour because this stuff adds so much 
like depth of flavor and richness to a dish. I absolutely love it. So that's gone in. And then we're gonna go in with a quarter of a cup of brown sugar. So light or dark brown sugar is absolutely fine for this. Next up, you're going to go in with a quarter of a cup of honey. Now, I can see by eye here that this is about a quarter of a cup. And as it's so sticky, I'm not going to measure it purely because I will lose some of it. So I'm just going to add that in now. Then next up, I'm going to add in some hot sauce. So this is a sriracha one. You could add in any that you got or you could admit this it just adds a little bit of heat and a little bit of depth of flavor again so i've added about a teaspoon there then i'm going to go in with about a tablespoon of chinese five spice and then finally i'm going to add in some garlic a good dollop or two so about two heat teaspoons but you could crush about four cloves of garlic and add that to the mix so all you want to do is give that a good stir together and i would recommend using a jug just because it's easier to pour it onto your chicken wings or your drumsticks whatever kind of meat you want to use so now that's all done and i've got my chicken drumsticks in slow cooker i'm just gonna pour that all over and then give it all a good stir and a mix through. And now that's all mixed together and the lid is on, I'm gonna cook this on high for around two to three hours until it's cooked. You could also cook this on low for about four to five hours, but that's entirely up to you depending on how much time you have. So this is the drumsticks all cooked through and now what I've done is mixed a teaspoon of corn flour with a teaspoon of water, mix that together to create a paste and then I'm gonna pour that in to thicken the sauce. And then once that's done, I'm gonna put these on a baking tray. This is optional, but I think it makes them taste really, really good. I've scattered them with sesame seeds and then I'm gonna put them under the grill just to add a bit of char and a bit of extra flavor and then they're done. And this is what we served it with, but you know, you can serve it with whatever you like and they would be great a party now the final one is perfect for a lazy weekend that said not that that really exists when you've got kids but it would be great for christmas day actually so say if you wake up what most of us do in the uk is that we wake up and we go down and we open our presents now you could put this pancake mix in the slow cooker and leave that cooking away and then go and enjoy opening presents and playing with the kids and then a couple of hours later you'll be ready to eat those pancakes and to be fair a couple of hours goes quite quickly on christmas day especially if your kids get you up early anyway so I would mix this up and pop it in the fridge the night before and then just get it in the slow cooker in the morning. But it is my slow cooker pancakes. It's really easy to do and I hope you enjoy this. This is the final recipe. So for your pancake mix, you're gonna need 200 grams of self-raising flour, a large tablespoon of caster sugar. I've got a tablespoon of baking powder in here as well. And then you're gonna need 200 mils of milk and 25 grams of melted butter, which I've mixed together in here and then you're also going to need three eggs so what I'm going to do now is add the wet ingredients to the dry ingredients whisk and then we'll pop in the slow cooker so before I add the batter into the slow cooker I have just rubbed the bottom and greased it with some butter just to stop anything sticking and now I'm going to pour this in and then I'm also going to add some blueberries once that's done so that's the batter in and now I'm just going to scatter in a few blueberries. My kids really like this. You could leave it plain and then top with fruit later. It is entirely up to you. And now all I'm going to do is cook this on high for two hours. So I will see you in a bit when they're done. So this is the pancake mix after about an hour and 45 minutes. So if you want to check it a little bit earlier, just insert a skewer or a clean knife in the center. And if it comes out clean, you know that it's done. Now what I like to do just to make things easier is that I like to slice this up in the slow cooker and then remove it individually because if you try and get the whole thing out sometimes it can be a little bit tricky but when I've done that I will show you what it looks like now it's finished. So this is the finished product so as you can see it does come out quite easily but I just find dividing it into different slices makes it a lot easier to get out. So I'm going to leave these to cool and then I'm going to pop them in some Tupperware and store them in the fridge and then when it comes to the morning I could just warm them up in the microwave and feed them to the kids or you could have it cold but it just speeds up the mornings and you could also do this for a special occasion as well it's really really easy to do and then I like to serve mine with extra fruit and a drizzle of maple syrup or honey depending on what you fancy 
So that is the end of my slow cooker recipe video. I hope you enjoyed it. I actually have another slow cooker video that I did earlier on this year, so I'll leave that link down below if you would like something to watch next. But other than that, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe if you are new, but I will of course leave that down to you. And yeah, have a lovely rest of your day.